Here are seven simple tricks to master in season nine, presented by Fortnite Master. In this video, we're gonna cover seven simple tricks that anybody can use and master. These range from minor optimizations to things you might have thought weren't possible. We even include a couple of tricks that could significantly change your gameplay. Full disclosure, we didn't come up with all of these ourselves, so check the description for proper credits and show their creator some love. Without wasting any more time, let's get started. The first trick is something that wasn't possible until about a month ago, and something that a few people were asking about in our last live stream. As of patch 8.50, you can turn on sound visualization and keep your in-game audio at the same time. Before, you weren't allowed to have in-game audio with this setting, but now you can have both, and some players have started taking advantage of this option. Sound visualization basically means you will see visual indicators, similar to when you get shot, that show the type of sound and which direction it's coming from. For example, sound visualization shows the footsteps around you and which direction they're coming from, as well as things like enemies gliding, gunshots, and chests. Sound visualization is actually great for finding those pesky chests hiding behind walls or tucked into dark corners. Faint XO, who writes these videos and records the clips, tried playing with sound visualization for a few days. The first thing we should tell you is that you shouldn't solely rely on visual indicators for everything. To be honest, there is already enough for your eyes to track in Fortnite, and adding all of the audio cues to that list won't do you any favors. That doesn't mean it's useless though. Sound visualization comes in handy when there is a ton of noise pollution. It's not perfect for every scenario, but let's say you're posting up and fighting with two separate teams that are both camping to your north. You're shooting them, your partner is building up, they're returning fire and destroying your builds, you get the picture. There are a lot of sounds, making it extremely difficult to hear somebody running and even building up right behind you. Using sound visualization, you'd be able to see the indicator of that person running up behind you even if you couldn't hear it. Another situation in which Faint found it useful is when you're trying to track a player through buildings, specifically when you're on top and they're running around below you. Let's say you're on top of the roof of a house. It can be incredibly hard to track somebody running back and forth on the ground level of that house. Sound visualization makes this a little easier because even though it doesn't help tracking vertically, you can at least tell which side they're on or whether they're running near the front or back door. This next trick is something you may have thought was impossible. There is actually a way to shoot once after using a rift. This comes in handy in those situations where you're fighting somebody and get them to low HP, but then they panic rift and take you with them. Or you could get fancy and if they're turtling with low HP, rift them to get a free shot. Immediately after the rift goes off, switch to your shotgun and spam the reload and shoot buttons at the same time. This should allow you to get a single shot before you start skydiving. This trick helps you finish up those low health enemies without going through the trouble of gliding straight back down or trying to follow them. You do, however, still need to be aiming at your target, so we did some research on players' positions after rifting. The first thing we found is that after rifting, you stay facing the same direction that you were on the ground. So if you were facing north when you rift, you will appear in the sky facing north. We also found that whenever you use a rift and take an enemy with you, they will always appear on your east side. Vice versa, if an enemy rifts you, you will always appear on their east side. This sounds a little confusing, but it's simple once you understand. Basically, anytime you're rifting another player, make sure you're facing east, because that's always the side they will appear on. If an enemy rifts you, you'll appear on their east side, so you'll want to be looking west. Next up, we have this creative edit to help you claim an opponent's builds. Imagine an opponent is boxed up and holding all of their walls. Unless you have better ping or some other kind of trick, it's going to be hard to claim a wall because they're likely holding turbo build on that piece. But what if they didn't know which piece you were going to destroy and replace? That's where this trick comes in. Place your own pyramid on the corner of their box and edit the square closest to that corner. If you run up on this pyramid, you have an angle to destroy four builds, two walls, their pyramid, and even their floor. 
This means you could get all of those builds to one shot, then pick one to destroy, which would force the player turtling to guess correctly in order to keep their own builds. This next trick is more of a way to optimize your movement through slipstreams. When you're gliding through a split stream, you can actually get a good amount of air by flying straight up. Now, this doesn't help you travel any faster, but it does come with a couple of other benefits. The first is that you have much better awareness. Flying through the split stream normally, you can't see much of what's going on around you. If you use this trick, you can easily see what's going on in any direction, like if there are players coming up that might want to take some shots while you're an easy target. This also tends to be the best way to exit a split stream because you can get more distance and land directly on the high ground if you want. You can also use this trick to cut some corners in the slipstream, which will make you travel faster than using it normally. This one is less of a trick and more of a mechanical choice that has become popular as of late. Instead of using one button for editing, some players have begun using two edit buttons, one to start the edit and another to confirm. As you may imagine, this makes it much easier to make multiple lightning fast edits in quick succession. In fact, one of the biggest problems with using two edit keys is being too fast. To do this, go into your key binds and set a primary and secondary key bind for your building edit button. It doesn't matter which is which, you can use both for either starting or confirming edits. As you can see, you have the ability to make edits almost instantly. We will say that it takes a decent amount of time to break old muscle memory and get used to two edit keys. The downside to this is you must use two key binds for something you previously only needed one. Plus, you want both of those keys to be keys you use two separate fingers to press and are easy to reach. Otherwise, it's not any different than using one edit key. You'll probably need to move around some other key binds to use this, so really think about it and test if it's worth it for you. We think that one edit bind is good enough for making most of the normal edits you'll use, like claiming and editing a wall or even double editing on someone. However, if you're always finding yourself in situations in which you need to make four or five super fast edits in quick succession, you may want to consider using two edit keys. Our sixth trick is useful, but it's more fun than anything else. The geysers scattered throughout the northeast corner of the map offer immunity to fall damage when you use them. This mechanic also works when you're in vehicles, which is what this trick is all about. Basically, if you hit a geyser when you're driving or riding in any vehicle, you still have immunity to fall damage if you jump out. First off, this immunity prevents you from dying if somebody destroys your vehicle mid-air. This also works really well with quad crashers. Use the geyser to boost yourself into the air, fly wherever you want on the map, then hop out whenever without fear of fall damage. To be honest, this is probably the most reliable way to land accurately after flying a quad. Same goes for ballers, except you can't fly around the map. And although the fall damage immunity is nice, the best part about this trick is dropping right on top of unsuspecting players. We can't explain it, it's just funny dropping right onto somebody who has no idea where you came from. Not to mention how great the strat is for getting some sick trick shots. This last one is another lightweight tip. If you aren't already, you should be using pyramids instead of floors to catch yourself when you're falling down or trying to connect builds from a distance. The reason being, you can place pyramids a further distance away than you can place floors. This is a pretty minor optimization, but could end up saving your life nonetheless. As you can see right here, you can't place floors two tile spaces away, but can place pyramids. This extra little bit of distance could come in clutch if you're trying to catch yourself with builds after getting shot out or making a long jump. Thank you guys for watching this video. For those who are new to the channel, if you've enjoyed this video, check out some of the others on the right side of the screen. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell to get notifications for whenever a new guide shows up. Thank you again so much and doubly so if you shared it with anyone else like your friends, family, or your pets. From over here at Fortnite Master, my name is The Saved One and we're out. Peace.